Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. I'm George Norrie. This is Coast to Coast AM. Stephen Machat back with us, his latest work, Unraveling the Bible, the Colonization of Earth and the Making of Mankind. Stephen, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. By the way, great story, Unraveling the Bible, the Colonization of Earth and the Making of Mankind. What got you into that area? I was born to do this. I came into Earth, and I was encouraged where I was to just question everything. And when I was a boy... My dad would put me in situations because I talked to everybody, be it Sam Cooke, my dad was his lawyer, you know, or James Brown, and then the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. And I met bands like the Kinks, and I met, you know, people from King Crimson. And all of a sudden, I'm dealing with chariots of the gods, and I'm like, there's something wrong here. Because I don't believe in the sky god that everyone worships. Because why would a real creator or a parent allow you to go kill beings. Why would they do that? I didn't understand it. And I figured there's something really, really twisted. So I went to discover who the Bible was written by and why it was written and what went on. And I spent 50, 50 years of my life researching it. And I did it through song and dance. I did it through touring with the bands all over the world. Like one day I'm in Peru. I'm doing a movie called Anaconda. I'm doing the music. The Japanese embassy gets invaded. They tell all of us to leave. Of course, I don't leave. And the next thing I knew, I'm exploring Peru. And there was really very few people there. And I went to a place called the NASCAR Lines. I went up in space and I saw those lines. And it was over, George. When I saw those lines, I realized there were beings that landed here. I don't care what anyone says to me. And I'm going to research this. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find out the difference between the gods of the Indus religion, the gods of South America, the Mayans, the Aztecs, you know, the Olmecs, the gods of the Middle East. You know, you have these three gods that fight over the Bible. I believe the Bible was written and it's been misunderstood as it gets rewritten and rewritten. And each new written version of that Bible confirms what the people who rule you want you to believe. And if you question them, you're automatically an outsider. But if you sit and use common sense, there's something bigger than this. I believe those gods were the people they were that created the people, and those gods were nothing other than the beings that came from planet Nibiru, landed here on Earth to get the gold, to get the silver, and to colonize Earth so they can make it basically a colony producing the gold down in South Africa. It's all there. You can see it. You know, like with ELO, we had that album. El Dorado, mm -hmm. all this stuff kept kind of being thrown at me. And I'm like, I sat there and I believed all these fables come from somewhere. We're not cavemen. We didn't start as cavemen. We were brought to Earth by the Nephilim. They created us. And it no doesn't negate the fact that there's a God out there above them, does it? Yeah, the way I, because I really analyze things. So you're 100% correct. But the word God, where did that come from? I look at what's really out there, and it's in the scriptures I've read, George. They all talk about the Creator. Did the Creator want us to do what we're doing? The Creator of all. It's written in their scriptures between themselves when they were communicating. Yes, there is a Creator of all of us, everything and even more. And, you know, we have the Creators, that we have the gods and the Creators that rule our solar system, but our solar system is nothing but a matrix, George. It's a matrix. And we're, you know, we're two parts to our body. We're basically a consciousness, and we're a higher consciousness, but once we fall into our bodies, we all of a sudden are now run by our brain. Our brain is not our intelligence. It's not our higher intelligence. Our brain runs the machine called our body, and it makes us on our three chakras, you know, the red, yellow, and orange chakras, which every beast does. All animals, you know, we eat, we sleep. We excrete and we go to sleep and we reproduce. Those are the four things. 
The other three things our consciousness allows us to do is basically I can communicate with you, I can improvise, I can see things, and I can communicate. I can get out of my body and bring in the elements of creativity, which is what all these artists I just told you about, they taught me. I learned, I sit there, I ask questions, I don't stop. I want to know where you got this from. Where did that song come into your head? You know, like with Donovan, when I met those people, and with Donovan, you know, I was in junior high, and I wanted to be Mr. Big Shot in high school, junior high. So he talks about the seven, the 12 tribes of Atlantis, and he tells you the five, and there were the missing seven. And I asked him who those seven was, and I kept pushing it. My father stopped me from going further because I wanted that answer. Yeah. But I knew we got it from somewhere, not just Plato. Your book refers, represents uh, some incredible thought, uh, and it basically covers the work of Eric Von Doniken, the late Zechariah Sitchin, and others who have come forward over the years to talk about this, Stephen. You also talk a little bit about Noah's Ark. We all know the traditional story. Is it different? Yes. What do we have? If, if, if I could just make everyone just imagine. Imagine that we're outside the Earth and we're looking. Say we're looking in the space, and space is nothing but a, a gigantic ocean of consciousness. That's what it is. Okay, so now in that consciousness, there's nine wobbling planets that go around the sun in a certain order. And then when you read these scriptures that I've read, and I've read them and I've read them, and all those gentlemen you just mentioned, I read anything and everything they have done. I go, every time there's a new scripture, I went to Vanderbilt, you know, and they're into this stuff when I went, went to law school. I would research this, and today on the Internet, it's all there. So what happened is, about 13 and a half, 14,000 Earth years ago, as witnessed by in the film, they saw their whole planet, Nibiru, come swarming across the, air, the space waves, and it was heading, you know, doing its rotation around the sun. But it doesn't rotate the way ours do. It comes in like one of those old yo-yo toys that we had, and it crossed Jupiter, it crossed Mars, and it had four planets, and it created an airwave shock. And it comes around us every 3,600 years, as it says in the scripture. Right. That shock made the planets rotate. It made a move. And according to the text that I've read, what it did is it hit the Earth, and it made, and this is really interesting, because it came to us from the south. And what it did is it dislodged the ice in Antarctica. It made a water mess that went running up our globe over the equator. It melted the ice age. Because when you read about all these scriptures, and no one wants to put together what I'm telling you, because they don't want to be, like, I worked with Stan Lee, and Stan Lee knew what I was talking about, but he would never tell it to anyone in public, because he was making money make, telling people these are cartoons. And I'm like, Stan, you need to tell these people. Because he and I, we had a company called together called Stan Lee Media, and he said to me, Steve, I can't. I go, why? He says, my living's on cartoons. I can't tell them that this stuff's true. I'll lose my whole audience. He said, someone got to do it. And he looks at me and he smiles and he says, I'll bet anything you're the one that's going to do it. I've been motivated to do it. So what happened is 13,000 years ago, everything got flooded. And Noah's Ark, the, the character's name was Zurostra, Z-I-U-S-U-D-R-A. And the name Noah, Noah comes from the area of, um, it's a Hebrew word. And it's also a word from um or whatever you want to call it, over there by uh, Babylon. And it means come to a, it comes to a rest. And it, the word is Nura. Is it Sumerian? Right? No, it's before Sumerian. It's it's basically, it's older. It's it's a local word. It's called N-U-K-H-U. It's how it translated to us in our language, in our phonetic language. You know, you got the five vowels, sometimes wine. You got the others. We live in Latin world even though we're told English and Latin are two different languages. It's the same pronunciation. And so it can, it's a word called nuku. And if you say it, it's how they got to Noah. And Noah means come to a rest. But the being that was there, his name was Zerustra, Z-I-U-S-U-D-R-A. He was a demigod. A demigod means half Nephilim, half human. Okay. That is the royal blood that they're all been looking for because they wanted the blood of the Nephilim 
because the Nephilim is a higher being than we are. They have a different body. They have the energy and the chemical components of the planet Nibiru in their DNA, not just our planets of Earth here. And they were looking for the higher being. That's the whole story of Alexander, who went looking for his father. Stephen, uh, Zachariah Sitchin has always said that the Anunnaki came here, genetically altered whatever species might have been on the planet, and hence here we are. Do you accept that? 100%. Because, again, even though I've done music my whole life, and I get, I get involved in a lot of things, even from Gianni Versace, clothing. I just love art. I love everything, and I love history, and I study history. And I write books. I have a book out called, you know, The Highways of Man. And this, this book's a series of three. And what I did is I married the history of what the scientists tell us about Earth to the scriptures that I've read that Zachariah helped me figure out as much as anyone, but also my travels. You know, I, I lived in Egypt for a while, and I w- went on a tour to learn everything going on there. And I didn't go down to South Africa when they were teaching me how those gold mines went in a ter- territory they called Abzu, A-B-Z-U. But I learned while I was there about Sudan. I learned about Somalia. I learned about Ethiopia. And I learned about the upper and lower Niles. And I went into all these places with these statues and these temples and the pharaohs and all these big statues. statues. And all of a sudden, I started marrying it to a different timeline. Mankind, the Yanakis came here 440,000 Earth years ago. They measured it in these tablets. Their, their year around the sun equals 3,600 Earth years. So what they did is they kept track of how long they were here. So they came here about 430,000 years ago. They landed in an area, and your listeners, and you, you probably noticed, but your listeners would like to notice, they reclogged the area we call the Red Sea, and they built a dam there in Yemen, where we're now having another problem. Yeah. And no one understands how it got there. And all of a sudden, they're telling you this is 2,000 years old. No, it's not. They're telling you these temples that went running around there are three to 5,000 years. No, they're not. They're 50,000, 75,000. The Great Flood wiped them out. They, all the books and records went bye-bye as the waters came rushing north up to our... That's also, if you study what I'm saying, that's how the Ice Age ended in Europe. Why doesn't but why doesn't modern science want to accept some of these theories, Stephen? They they do because it would upset the entire order process that you and I live under, where all of a sudden we're told Jesus died for your sins and now he's with God. And you know, I'm not sitting and diminishing it all because it's a lovely story. Jesus is love. But this is to control you. Christ is control. And but you know, Jesus is the Antichrist. I love Jesus. I love that energy. And I wrote a book dedicated to him. It's taking Jesus off the cross, which is another thing I got in the middle of when I got in the middle of Martin Scorsese's movie of, you know, Back with Jesus Christ, when we were doing the Peter Gabriel music for Passion in that movie. And I started researching. I started living in Glastonbury. And I found out a lot of interesting figures. But to go back to what you said, today's modern scientists, they acknowledge that something came into Earth. And if you look it up, and this is what I love the most. You could look it up right now on your phones. And they say that about 300,000 years ago, 233 enzymes that never appears in any fossils that they uncover, these enzymes, somehow got to Earth. Well, it marries exactly what these books tell you, because they had to create mankind, and they created a higher educated person. They captured our consciousness and incarcerated us in a in this system where all of a sudden our higher consciousness is now being limited by our bodies. So we become slaves and servants. That's what we were. We were slaves to get the gold and we became servants for the high pollutant, Nephilim and Anakis, meaning Earth. They, the Nephilim called these space settlers here Anakis. That means they were the Earth people. And then you had the Iggies, which were the moon people, not the moon people, the Mars people because they were using Mars. And if you look it up right now, just anyone listen to me, put in Mars pyramids. They'll show you pictures of the pyramids. This is how they did their space travel. They had to have something there that they could have lights beaming into space. And so there's 233 genes, and I really spent time. You know, COVID did 
basically COVID helped me because I had nothing, I had really no one to talk to. My wife, thank God she's here. And, you know, I died back in February and I came back to life. What, what, had, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, what do you mean you died in February? What happened to you? I, I had a problem with my back. And I found the doctor because I do. I I try to find out everything, and my back was leaking. My the disc in your back. I consider it like satellites of uh-huh. Saturn, and the leak because all all it begins with a thought, which becomes a gas, which becomes liquid, which becomes a solid. That's how you create life in physical form. And so what they did is they went in there and they sealed my disc, and at the same time, they're studying this right now in the Mayo Clinic that I had these these bugs, you know, and I had an abscess that came alive and started eating my spinal cord. And I really, I'm, you know, I could go through this at another length. We're talking about this, but I had a choice to either come or go. And I saw my wife, Debbie, who I love, and I was thinking, no, no, we started this trip together. This is a woman I met in 1964 when we were in junior high. We really didn't speak to each other until... My son died in 2015 oh, because we were, I had a rock and roll. I basically had the electronic, maybe the largest independent electronic record label with Baron. That's his name. I named him Baron Alexander Michat. And Alexander made me want to go explore even more. So that's another story that I went to Egypt with my son. And that's what I was telling you earlier with all these scientists showing us everything that they knew there. And so... I decided that I wasn't going to die, and it took me three months to walk. When we did our talk on June 26, that was my first airplane ride. That's right. I was alive. I've been in London four times from mm-hmm. August to the end of December. Well, we're I glad went you're back. I, well, thank you. I'm happy to talk to you guys. I just want to give this knowledge. I was in Israel. I gave lectures on this book right before the invasion when the, the uh, Hamas, or not Palestinians, the Hamas invaded. I was there like two weeks before, telling people that you need to you need to stop this. You can't lock those people up. And then they came over. But that's not my point. My point really is I sold this book in Israel. I was on TV selling this book. I was, the newspapers called it the best alternative version that they've read. And they said there's something really serious here that we should all become aware of. Like I was in Sinai looking for, that's where they hid their nuclear weapons in the film. And the last thing that Anki wrote, E-N-K-I, who was one of the, he was basically the father of mankind. Right, Sitchin has written about Anki. Yeah, and he wrote in that book, and his, Sitchin's words was he wrote the book because he did not want what went on above to happen below. And he's doing this because he said mankind will evolve into what we are right now. The planet will evolve into what we are. And I want them to be able to live in peace and not sit there killing each other, being divided by different territories and possessions of land. Stephen, let me ask you this. When the Bible talks about fallen angels coming down and mating with the daughters of man, and then the Nephilim was created, is that what we're talking about? Almost. It was, yes, almost. So specifically, and by the way, George, this I just sit here wandering at night, so my brain goes, and I want to see things, and I do see things. What it is is, then the film came here, they called them the Anakis, they created mankind, and they created mankind, they, they, they pollinated mankind, and they made different versions of it. So everything in the Bible were the demigods, the ones that were half the film blood, and then the rest was mankind, and it, it was the woman that carries the blood, no matter what you and I say. Our children have our our mother's blood, you yeah. know? So that's what they were looking for. But yes, they made it, and they went crazy. They made different demigods, and the demigods became the pharaohs, and the pharaohs had a priest, and the priest was the one that was taught all the higher knowledge right in the film. And then you had the kingdoms that were created when they decided to create civilization, which goes back to about 6,000 years ago, just what the modern interpretations of the Bible say, and they had the king, and they had the orb, and they had the, the, the little stick that they carry. It's, it's all there. It's, and I just, because of my love for history, and I've lived in over 100 countries, George. I'm not like someone that just read the books and wrote this. I've been there. I've been all over, and I want to go to more, and I hope I can still go to more. 
I was in Bolivia, and I started going to the um, the mountains of where the uh, Isle of the Moon and the Isle of the Sun. And I learned right then and there that this religion, the Inca religion, was basically, it's the same thing as the uh, Hindu religion with the uh, Bhagadaba, if I pronounce it right. And all these religions tie together and they lived in three communities. They lived in North Africa and after the flood, they got into Southern Europe because the Ice Age was over. They lived in what today we call Turkey and Iran and Iraq, and you could just keep going over. They they lived in that that terrain, and they lived. They didn't live in Central Africa because it was dark and their skin didn't like it. But they were in the temperate South Africa. They were in South America because they needed the gold that was in the mountains, and that happened after the flood, because the gold, the water got there and the gold came out of the mountains, and that's how they built El Dorado. That's the whole fable which was a great ELO album, if you remember it. That's right. And, um, you know, it's it's all there for everyone to see if they just go there and if we open our eyes. And there's nothing wrong with being wrong, because every day we find out more. Biblical purists who may not agree in the Anunnaki theory or the extraterrestrial theory, what do you think? What do you say to them? Well, it's simple. Let's get, let's get a... I wish I had the money. Anyone that's really into it, I'd like to fly you over to NASCAR lines. Let's look at the NASCAR lines and tell me that this is not... They, who made those lines? You know, I'll give you a quick story. When I was a kid, 1977, 78, Genesis was on the road, and I was told I couldn't use lasers. And I'm like, all right. And what we did is I, I put the lasers on, and they tried to arrest me in New York for doing lasers. So that made me just think of that, because what, before we even had planes, we had helicopters or whatever, someone, some mankind just sat there and made these laser lines in the NASCAR lines that shows you, first off, they have landing gear. You can only see them from above. Correct. And by the way, Lake Titicaca, if you look at it, this drove me crazy. It looks like a Jaguar. I saw that. Yeah, it's got and that. I really believe that they had these things that they could alter water. I believe Moses, Moses used what's called Rosalind, R-O-S-S-L-Y-N-N. It's a Masonic word that means floating stone. I believe they had an anti-gravitational force that could separate water, move mountains. I believe all this. I believe everything in that Bible. You know, if I'm wrong, friends, it's the greatest science fiction story you'll ever read. Did they leave or did, do they still come back? <laughs> Still. Yeah, I think they're going to come back. You know, they, they, they need gold. They need gold to plug their atmosphere. Or maybe they're onto other things. You know, maybe something went wrong with their planet. But they sure have left their imprint. But then again, you know, I believe they left when Moses split, except they've told one he couldn't go home. His name was Marduk. And Marduk was an animal. And Marduk's star sign. By the way, they created the star signs. And I wrote my book showing it the star signs because different rulers had different star signs of the the film family, the King Anu. His family had different star signs. So like 3500 BC, all of a sudden you see the bull. Well, who's the bull? The bull was Enli. You know, then you're about 2000 BC, all of a sudden you start seeing rams. And it's like, what is this? You know, why a ram? And that's the star sign. And then after the ram, right, what do you got next? You know, and it just keeps going on. After the, it was, Then you go into Pisces. And then after Pisces, what do you have? Well, hello, friends, we're in Aquarius. And then you have Capricorn. Then you have Sagittarius. And then you get to me, the Libra again. You know, if you look at the uh, Great Pyramid, and it matches each each new episode that they talk about is between 2,000 and 2,200 years with the waves, the air that comes in, and this airwave ruling this. It's all genetics. It's not genetics. It's all physics and how the current of air rotates around our solar system. It's a gigantic toy that we're all living in, and that may hurt everyone, and it used to hurt me too, and I just accept the fact. And that's why my whole premise, my whole theory of life is, Hey, we just came to Camp Earth, and we need to make Earth a place where we all can love, 
live our dreams. I want everyone to dream. That's why I'm putting out five albums right now. And I'm telling you, all five should be hits. I have the Buena Vista Social Orchestra, which, George, I'm going on the road again. Because it may be my last time to be able to do it. I'm, I actually recovered. You know, I'm you. almost able to walk without a cane. Good for you. The love of my wife got me there. And, and she and I, I share a love for people. I love people. I can't stop talking. And I don't want you to sit and believe that there's a sky god that makes you pray to him. And you must fear him. And you must do this. Get rid of that. God is love. Love is God. That's all it is. So let's learn everything we can learn. Let's become wiser than we were before. Each day is a new day. Each day is radiation. You know, and that's why I sit here and I just love art. I love helping people create. And I really believe all my records are going to work because I've got the energy. I got another chance to finish what I didn't finish. Stephen, do you think they're watching our progression, our growth? And by the way, yes, I really do. And I'm smiling now. You know, because when I read these tablets, they had, it's, you ever watch George Jetson? Yes. It makes me think of the Jetson show. It's like, whoever wrote that sure knew what was going on. Or how about Superman? And I was a kid, I couldn't get out of these comics. Even Dick, like, Dick Tracy. Yeah, right? Dick Tracy and DC Comics, it was Detective Comics. But I believe they're watching us. You know, when I in the book, when I discuss with you, where Moses gets the orders from, um, his name was An Lee. What he was telling him was he gave him, he gave him a chance so he could communicate with them as they were going back to Nibiru. And he was telling them that he would protect them. He didn't say he'd protect them forever and ever more. And by the way, that's what I told the Jewish folks in Israel when I was giving lectures. They said, that God's long gone. You know, he's probably now king of Nibiru, if you read my book. And I don't care if you believe me or not, because you tell me, where's my proof? Well, where's my proof of what you're telling me? Well, the Bible. Well, how many times was the Bible written? What language was it written in? Who wrote it? And if you really study these tablets that we have, then the film lived in a vertical world. They, did, they wrote vertically, right? And they would write from north to south. And then somehow when mankind came around, because we didn't have that intelligence at the time, we switched it. And we made it a horizontal world. Good point. And what we did is we started writing on the right because we were using chisels because we didn't have script. And we would chisel and it would go to the left. That's why they used to read right to left. And then when we learned how to write with a pen, it became right to left. And Stephen, would you say your book Unraveling the Bible is controversial? But you know what it is? It's metaphysics. It's physics. It's art. It's it's songs. You know, I'm I'm putting that band out, I told you, the Buena Vista Social Orchestra. Yeah. And I've got songs. And in, what I did is my new book is because I can't get out of this. I'm showing you where the songs came from and what different religions in these African territories where all of a sudden the Vatican starts selling slaves to go build a new world. And they take them here and they don't know what's going on. And all these songs come from some different African orientation. The Europeans got in the middle and they brought... Instead of having the congos and rhythms, they brought in, you know, the brass instruments. And I just, through music, I've seen everything going on. And I'll, I'll defy anybody. It's, I'll give you one more. It's like right now, our presidential election. All it is is you got Donald Trump acting like he wants to be the new superstar. And he was the superstar. And I give him a lot of credit for surviving. But he's a world, world wrestling federation. Then he goes stomping around like he's ready to go on the wrestling mat. Hmm. And to beat him, you need someone with finesse, someone with style, because all it is is a contest of how much merchandise you could sell. And no one's putting on Joe Biden's shirt. And I keep, you know, it's, I look at this, I'm like, what don't they understand? We still believe in mom and gods. We give away our powers to individuals. And I'm all about giving all the people the power. I'm an entrepreneur. I believe you should be able to do whatever you want to do and go create. Just don't create where you harm people's lives. And that's my whole purpose. That's why I wrote the book, because I knew that it was based on truth. You know, when you have the, in the film language, and then you have three languages, no one's deciphered you. You have the Indus River Valleys. You have basically the Danube languages, of the Aborigines and all that area over there, the Georgia language. We haven't deciphered what it means. And then you have the Mayan 
the Mayan languages and you have the Incas languages down there. We've never dissected what it is, the Mayan calendar. If you use six as your principle, I, I haven't studied it that hard. I believe you'll figure out what they were telling you about. Because in Babylon, they used to use six, 360. The Arabs gave us the 10. You know, it became our base. And when I'm telling people, they're like, oh, this guy's talking too much. No, I'm not. Things change. Like, why are we on Fahrenheit in the United States and the rest of the world's on Celsius? Why is England drive on one side of the road and we drive on the other? That's how they used to have wars. They would square off like they were playing checkers and chess. Then the film played chess with, with each other when they divided the territories. It's just a royal land grab, and they divided and created different religions and different languages, and they made a mess of Earth, and we need to undo it by coming together and uniting. All right, Stephen Machat, his uh, website is linked up at Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners, and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.